Baseball, it's here upon us, America's favorite pastime. A guy named Chase Headley, he is an all-star, golden glove. Uh, they've got some other uh, awards that I'm not familiar with that he got. Uh, and he was sliding into a base and broke his thumb, and he'll be out for a few weeks, but then he, uh, uh, he'll be back soon uh, into the game. But recently, he told sports reporter Tom Buring that for him, Baseball is more than a sport. You believe this? It's an act of worship. And Headley drills one to deep left field. Chase Headley is among baseball's new emerging all stars. And what a night for Headley. Not flashy by any means. I would say serious, hard nosed, passionate. I cherish, you know, the moment. Uh, I love what I do. He's had to. The San Diego Padres third baseman survived four major league seasons before finally delivering on his long-awaited potential. It's a learning curve. I mean, you, you, you come into the league and uh, obviously you're confident, you know what you can do, but um, you're also playing against the best players in the world every day. And, uh, you know, it takes a while to get used to that. You gotta keep working, you gotta be diligent in your work. Um, you know, improve a little bit each and every day. Chase had a career year last season, hitting 31 home runs and leading the National League in runs batted in. He's now among the game's elite, both offensively and defensively. And drive that Henley is able to snare. Becoming just the eighth National League third baseman ever to win both the Gold Glove and Silver Slugger Award in the same season. It was a breakout year for me, but you know what I always thought I could do. Hadn't, hadn't shown it in the big leagues, but it felt great to get there. So what makes this Major League Silver Slugging third baseman unique? For Chase Headley, it's his power source, where it comes from and how he uses it. You know, God didn't, didn't make us to be, you know, passive, timid, uh, people. Baseball for me is a form of worship and, and I expect to go out there and win and compete and play as hard as I possibly can. Circle back to that. Explain that. How is it an act of worship? Worship isn't just singing songs or dancing or whatever it is. It, anything that we do can be an act of worship. You know, I think it's important that we realize that and those days you go out there where you don't feel good, you, you know, you're a little bit tired, you don't feel like being there or whatever it is or, or on the practice field, you know, that that's where I go to. You know, I say, hey man, this is I'm doing this for God today. Whatever it is, you know, I'm taking ground balls in the backfield. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for Jesus. And, and that gives me that little extra drive to, you know, to stay focused. That focus first came as a high school freshman when a neighbor and teammate invited Chase to his house for a fellowship of Christian athletes event. The message was on salvation and, uh, you know, just really felt, a, you know, a, a spiritual pull, you know, in that direction. I mean, it was, uh, you know, it was clear that I was supposed to be there that at that time and, uh, you know, really, really uh, turned my life over to Christ that night. His reputation as a team first player and locker room leader is respected among teammates, coaches and opponents. You have a chance to be a light. It's the relationships you build, it's caring about other people, how you deal with adversity, with failure. And the best part about it is when you don't even say anything about it and somebody approaches you and says, hey man, I, you know, I see something a little bit different about you. you. You know, just the peace that you have to deal with ups and downs or, you know, each and every day, you're, you're just a consistent, uh, you know, influence in our, in our clubhouse and, and what is it? And then you get the opportunity to open up and, and say it. The baseball veteran is using his platform to encourage and inspire others. For me, you know, it's just to share the gospel. I mean, I think that's uh, the most important thing I can do. I think God put me in this, this position for that purpose. And, uh, you know, I just want to live that out for him. His recent success is making a name for himself, but he's quick to deflect the credit, even with a post home run gesture. Circle the bases. Next time I watch that, what's going through your mind, what's going through your heart? And it's just, uh, you know, thanking, thanking God for, for giving me the opportunity to play the game, to, to have an impact. Um, you know, just, just again, it's a worship saying, you know, I love you. This is about you. You know, this is not about me. You know, I look at it to take the spotlight off me and to put it on God, and that's where I want. You know, I want to be a mirror. I want it to, you know, whoever looks at me to see Christ. His profession rewards with notoriety and money, but Chase has grabbed a faith that empowers his life and career. You know, for me, you know, I always thought looking up, you know, man, if I could ever make it to the major leagues, you know, my life is going to be complete. And I can tell you, it, it, it's not any different than it was before, other than the fact that I have Christ in my life. And, uh, 
you know, that, that's what completes me. That's what, what gives me the sense of, uh, you know, peace, um, my sense of purpose. You've done something so bad that nobody can forgive you. Well, there's one person that can forgive you, and that's Jesus Christ. Whatever you do in word and do, deed, do all to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Chase Headley believes that, and he lives it. How wonderful that God has given him a platform. But you know, God has given each one of us a platform. Wherever we are, we can be on television, that's a big platform. Or you can be in a local church, that's a smaller platform. Or you can be sitting next to somebody in an office. Or walking around the street, or meeting somebody casually. There are all kinds of ways, but let your life be such that reflects the glory of God. And let me ask some of you right now, Chase Headley has a piece. He said, people see me, they come up to me and say, what is it about you that's different? There's so much trouble in the world. There's so much disaster. I was reading in the book of Daniel to, today, and he was talking about how his people had sinned against God, was asking God's forgiveness. And I was thinking back to the horrors of the Holocaust, and thinking of the awful torment you think of the inhumanity that has been shown toward other people throughout the ages. It's just brutality, warfare, bloodshed, horrible things. But you know, one thing rides above it all, and that's Jesus Christ. Just like that cross that came out of the wreckage of the World Trade Center, the cross of Jesus towering o'er the wrecks of time. In the cross of Christ I glory. How about you? What is your glory? What is your center of peace? What is it that motivates you? And you know, God says to you right now, I love you. Not all of them, I love you. I love you, and I died for you, and I will come and receive you unto myself, <clears throat> that where I am, you can be also. Would you like that? Would you like to know that when he comes back, you'll be with him forever in a place of joy and unspeakable glory? Well, if you want that, you have to ask him. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask him right now. I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to bow your head wherever you are. Say these words, but meet them in your heart. These words. Pray with me. Do it. Jesus, right now, do it. Jesus, I want to be with you. I want to share in your kingdom. I want the peace that passes understanding. Lord, you know I'm a sinner. You know I haven't lived for you. But yet I know you died for sinners, and I know you died for me. And so, Lord, right now, I turn away from selfishness and my own way, and I turn to you, and I say, Jesus, come into my heart. Live in me, and from this moment on, I'm yours. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me just then, the Lord's heard it, and he's answered it. And you say, well, what do I do now? I just prayed that prayer. What do I do now? I have something that tells you what you do now. It's called a new day. It's a new day for you. And I put a lot of material in this little compact disc. It's 73 minutes of very intense teaching. And all you have to do is free. It doesn't cost anything. You got a car, uh, most of us have a little deal in our car radio. You slip a um, compact disc in it and turn it on, and you can sit in your car and listen. Or you can take it home or wherever you, you've got electronic uh, devices. It's there for you, and I'll give it to you free. So please call right now and say, I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to the Lord, and Jesus has heard, and he's answered. It's 1-800, it's a toll-free number. 1-800-759-0700. It's easy to remember. 
please call. Of course, we love you, and the Lord loves you. And somebody's on the phone right now who will be thrilled to hear the good news. Terry? Yes, 